Before we dive into angiosperm biotechnology, we first need to get a basic understanding of angiosperm reproduction. Many angiosperm species reproduce both asexually and sexually. Asexual reproduction, also known as vegetative reproduction, results in a clone of genetically identical organisms, and it is beneficial in stable environments. The most common type of asexual reproduction is fragmentation, which refers to the separation of a parent plant into parts that will develop into whole plants. In some species, a parent plant's root system gives rise to adventitious shoots that can develop into separate shoot systems. Adventitious simply means that it is not developed from its main organ. Apomixis refers to a cloning of seeds from the play cell. On the other hand, sexual reproduction generates genetic variation that makes evolutionary adaptation possible. Therefore, it is beneficial in unstable environment. As I mentioned in my previous video on angiosperm, sexual reproduction of angiosperm involves pollination, which is the transfer of pollen from anther to stigma that can be carried out by abiotic agents such as wind and water, or biotic agents such as bees, butterflies, birds, and flies. After landing on a receptive stigma, a pollen grain produces a pollen tube that extends between the cells of the style toward the ovary. Double fertilization results from the discharge of two sperm from the pollen tube into the embryo sac in the ovule. One sperm combines with egg to produce zygote. The other sperm combines with two polar nuclei to form the triplet endosperm, which becomes the food source for the embryo. After double fertilization, each ovule develops into a seed, and the ovary develops into a fruit enclosing the seed. More details on angiosperm sexual reproduction has been covered in my previous video titled Plant Life Cycles. Many angiosperms have mechanisms that make it difficult or impossible for a flower to self-fertilize, therefore ensuring genetic variation upon sexual reproduction. Dioecious species have staminate and carpolate flowers on separate plants. In other plants, stamen and styles mature at different times or arranged in a way to prevent self-fertilization. The most common mechanism is self-incompatibility, which is a plant's ability to reject its own pollen, usually through a signal transduction pathway leading to a block in the growth of a pollen tube. Humans have implemented various methods for vegetative propagation of angiosperms, which are usually based on the ability of plants to form adventitious shoots or roots. Many kinds of plants are asexually reproduced from plant fragments called cuttings. A callus is a mass of dividing undifferentiated cells that forms where a stem is cut and produces adventitious roots. During grafting, scion, which could be a twig or a bud, can be grafted onto a stalk, which provides the root system from a closely related species or variety. Scientists can also perform tetsu cloning of a whole plant from undifferentiated cells. They can also genetically modify plants to express foreign genes. These plants are known as transgenic plants. Finally, protoplast fusion is used to create hybrid plants by fusing protoplast, plant cells with their cell walls removed. Plant biotechnology refers to innovations in the use of plants to make useful products. It can more specifically refer to the use of genetic modified organisms in agriculture and industry. Genetically modified plants or transgenic crops have been developed to produce toxins such as Bt toxin that is toxic to insect pests. Transgenic crops have also been developed to improve nutritional quality. For example, golden rice is a transgenic variety being developed to address beta-carotene or vitamin A deficiency. Transgenic crops can also improve disease resistance and herbicide tolerance. Another aspect of plant biotechnology is biofuels, which are made by fermentation and distillation of plant materials such as cellulose. Biofuels can be produced by rapidly growing crops and reduce dependency on fossil fuels. There are some risks in releasing genetically modified organisms into the environment. First, genetic engineering may transfer allergens from a gene source to a plant used for food. Second, genetic engineering may have negative effects on non-target cells. The most serious concern is transgene escape, which is the possibility of introduced genes escaping into related weeds through crop-to-weed hybridization. There are four main mechanisms to prevent transgene escape, including making the male sterile, apomixis, which is the cloning of seeds from the play cell, engineering transgenes into the chloroplast DNA and not transferred by pollen, and strict self-pollinization.